are allowing our grades to continue coming in right through August, from the mid-August onwards, but we want our great arts to only come back in August. It's very clear and we know that uh, that's a very high risk in the situation of Eastern Cape where you have got these uh, young grandchildren staying with their grandparents. And if these young people are contracting this virus at school, it will be more dangerous for their grandparents back at home, especially in the rural areas. Let me close, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with these uh, two matters of critical importance. The first one is the alleged corruption that has raised its ugly head again in one of our municipalities, the Oar Tambo district municipalities, in the form of a very suspicious so-called door-to-door campaign which cost 4.8 million. We were not surprised at all when it happened because we knew there will be chance takers who would use this pandemic to get rich quick. Hence, from the onset, our Provincial Command Council meeting directed all accounting officer, officers, municipal managers to be on high alert during this time and pay particular attention to procurement-related matters. We want to lead this fight free of scandals. We want scandalous free campaign against this virus. Where issues like this show their ugly head, they must be attended to. I've already uh, written as well to the president asking for SIU, the MEC COCTA and the Department of COCTA with Treasury are already working on a preliminary investigations on the allegations that have been that have surfaced issues against alleged fiscal dumping payment of money to service providers that have not done any work all that packaged together must be attended to so we are dealing with that situation in our tambo but our attitude and our approach is that we must always seek the truth from facts to ensure that our response to that will be a very effective one. I'm happy that uh, hawks are already on the ground and their cases opened with police as well around these matters. And these matters must be thoroughly dealt with. We've got our front line here. We've got our tracing teams. We've got our testing teams. We've been running around this province. And now they've tested more, more than 170,000 people. Uh, they've never had a situation like this. We've never heard about door-to-door -door, uh, campaigns where people are paid. People are paid their salaries because they are employed to do this work. So it's a very strange uh, thing that we believe the investigations that are taking place there will unearth the truth and uh, that truth will be dealt with uh, as it will also come out. We applaud the patriotic action of those whistleblowers that have gone out public uh, to actually deal with this. And we want to continue appealing to our people. Issues of this nature must always be reported to police for crime investigation, for corruption investigation. You don't have to report them anywhere because the reason that we fail to deal with corruption where it actually manifests is to use these issues as a platforms for political bickering, for political issues. Corruption cannot be equated to politics. Politics are about service to our people. Where corruption comes in, you are dealing with thugarism, and we must deal with that as such and confront it uh, as such. Secondly, we also wanted to welcome the developments on the issue of the test kits that were in the care of National Health Laboratory Service, which were found on the N2 between East London and King Williamstown. That was an uncalled for incident which, we, which should have not happened. We continue condemning it, we have condemned it. The National Health Laboratory Services has done the right thing by terminating the contract of that courier company that was involved in the incident. They have to go back to the drawing board to fix their operational discipline. It is also a hard lesson to learn for other businesses as well as other, as, as well to always do their jobs professionally. 
zizindo ezinga faneleganga is. And it just can't uh, really be convincing and uh, be easily explained. But we are happy that there's an action that has been taken by those who have authority uh, to attend to the matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Premier. Uh, we'll now take questions from journalists. And if you want to ask any question to the MECs, both MECs of Education and Health are here. Uh, now it's your turn for questions. Vuiseka uh, Karneta. Okay. Yanga. Nibane. Balami. Okay. Hrodman at the back. Okay. I started probably and then. Um, Good morning, Bob. Uh, my question is directed to the MEC for education. Uh, the problem is not for education. Um, while basic education minister said that uh, by the 20th, uh, some of the learners should be replaced back to, to school. Now, my question is are they coming in back in the province? Or I, I hear the Premier talking about uh, the end of August. I'm just seeking clarity on that. Okay. Okay. Mm. But, yes. Thank you. Um, I'll be one kid up on the NC. Just to add um, to Yanga's question, uh, MEC. Can we also just get the latest numbers in terms of infections within the education uh, sector and as well as the deaths, more specifically educator and learner deaths? Um, and then just generally, if you understand the president gave a deadline to the ECK province in terms of um, the isolation facilities, can we get an update in terms of how far we are in terms of meeting the president's deadline uh, in the isolation facilities? And do we have enough? beds in hospital to cater for the pandemic, as well as um, other illnesses in general. Okay. Right at the back. The corner, any question of Bruyere Pongo? On a Okay. Okay, after him. Thank you very much. My name is Andy Lemaile. I'm from a new newspaper. My question is very much related to the one that was given by one other speaker. It uh, has something to do with uh, education as well. My issue here is if the other provinces are starting with the reopening of schools, that is the admission of uh, grades, since grade R, grade 11, and our province has asked to have a postponement in this regard. I'm just trying to think, well, what are the implications in as far as uh, writing of the examination is concerned? This also applies to grade 12s, where some schools have closed, and uh, I'm concerned about what's going to happen when they are supposed to be writing the same national paper. Thank you very much. Okay. Amen. Who was my Um I've had the premier like talking about the new strategy which focuses on the metro. We are still seeing the growth outside the metros, especially in Oval Town and Kusali. He saw say there's a strategy there which he hasn't really come out clear as what the strategy is actually compared to the new one which will focus on this case and what's in the metros. Secondly, um, I don't know if it's just an omission from the communications in health, but 
we are no longer getting that daily updates as per disputes. So I, I just don't know if it's just an omission, it's just that we've also stopped calling for it, but it's been helpful and um, I just don't know now why it's just stopped coming. Okay. Something or no? No other questions. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the MEC for education, and then MEC for health, and then Kimia will wrap up. Thank you. Uh, Ngosi Program Director Mandi Bulise Kulumbusu eh, Bapati Sabakoyo na yongu mtokoyo apa engine na mtanji eh, Okokala eh, Mawawa Besi Kaile indogo kwa umpati soweze mfundo chikelele eh, Makasi ipe i-division i uh, go by competence ya ke lendo yokwenza itivation because remember anything that relates to change in the national calendar in the schooling system in the country is a competence of the national minister and therefore having made an analysis um, both in education as a sector first and foremost and generally in the government sectors, because when you talk COVID-19, you talk of a transversal matter that cuts across sectoral departments, and therefore a response of any sector in government must be able to appreciate that there is going to be a need of an approach that is a bit holistic and an approach that does not uh, undermine the protocols of government. On the basis of that analysis, we then said, look, uh, the current infections in the province and also the rise on, on the deaths of people in the province and also the changing weather conditions um, that are becoming prevalent in the province. Because remember, we are a province whose winter season is quite a uh, dangerous if you, if you like, and therefore it's going to be important that in our approach and strategy of government, we take that into serious consideration when we face in other grades as per the, the, the national calendar proposal that the minister was, was bringing to the fore into, 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 the C, into the CM. We have been granted the division not because we are not ready in the context of managing teaching and learning, but we have been granted division on the basis of what then becomes what the Premier has raised in terms of ensuring that in the execution of education as a principal task of the sector, we don't find ourselves becoming vulnerable generally because of the health uh, of the populace of the province and the infections, therefore. We have been granted a division to reopen uh, the phasing in of other grades, your grade 3, grade 6, grade 11. On the 20th of, of July, uh, that's what, that's what the, the, the division acceptance has indicated. Now, but because we issued instruction 37 to all institutions of learning in the province, a bit later, and also the minister's briefing was on Sunday a bit later, and therefore we are going to have, in fact we are not going, we are having a hybrid kind of an arrangement, if I can be allowed to use that concept. Some schools have applied via the regulations we have and directives in the sector 
to phase in those grades because they don't have constraints in the context of the COVID-19 regulations. And therefore, we have, they have been granted to do that. Others are on the, on the, on the, on the, on the application mood as we speak. And therefore, others have not because they have got constraints. So you are going to have a, an imbalance kind of an arrangement uh, during the course of July, which as a province, we have no, no challenge on that. In relation to grade 12, grade 12 has not been affected. Grade 12 is operating. Grade 12 plans are in the province are quite intact. And grade 12s in the province have got have yielded uh, resounding outcomes and uh, giving projections that we are going to meet the target, by the way, uh, that we have set for ourselves as a province. Uh, in the province, we have created uh, what you can call intervention camps for grade 12, where a number of students that comes from a variety of institutions of learning are taught by by senior educators with experts and skills in various skills of, of, of teaching and learning. So that's the approach of the province that begins to suggest to affirm our commitment in ensuring that we take the province uh, in the context of grade 12 uh, results a bit seriously. What are the implications in terms of the various approaches of the system in the country across provinces. Yes, of course, the majority of provinces, by the way, have requested deviations from, 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 that, from, that, from that calendar. Hence, grade R is not part of the phase in as per the national calendar then. Phase in across all provinces is not part of, 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 of the of the of the phasing in of the of grade three, six, and eleven, as, as as stipulated in the in the in the instruction now, that indicates the commitment generally of government of ensuring to save lives, whilst on the other side saving livelihood, and also carry the task of government with 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 diligence and also with 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 with, with caution. Uh, because uh, uh, COVID-19 is a deadly virus. Uh, in connection with the statistics um, currently, in the previous uh, briefing, we, we were saying to you, we have been hit a bit hard as a province uh, in terms of infections in the institutions of learning. But however, I would want to say, if you talk statistics of infection, that's, that's something that is a moving target. Uh, today you get this, and recoveries come back, and, uh, and then tomorrow you get something else. But in the context of the deaths, on, on the PDOC extended a uh, meeting on Sunday, uh, we were registering 18 deaths as a province from the 15 deaths that we had in the previous briefing. Um, it's three learners in the main, uh, four non-teaching staff in the main, and an increase at the level of teachers, which is also a serious concern for the sector, uh, to 11 instead of that previous eight then, which takes you to, which takes you to 18. Uh, in terms of the infections, we have not uh, yet received um, new data. Uh, we are working closely with the Department of Health. We are still with the infection uh, statistics that we get uh, in the previous, in the previous briefing which was uh, 396 learners then, um, uh, 634 teachers uh, with 526 non-teaching staff. But as I'm saying, it's a moving target. Because remember, by that time, Makaula, Makaula senior secondary students 
were not released from the quarantine and closed up that period that is required in terms of the regulations from the health. And we would want to upfront um, a thanks for uh, the collaboration framework and uh, uh, working together with the Department of Health, Department of Social uh, Development, and the Department of Public Works, because that has made us to be able to have a sizable number of students that are coming back, hence I'm make, making an example of the Makaula Senior Secondary School in terms of the in terms of the in terms of the infections and the and the and the and the and the and the and, and, and death statistics that have been required. I'm not sure program director but I should think I have covered all the questions asked. Uh, good morning, Premier. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning, media houses in the house. Uh, on the issue of isolations, which has been asked, I would want to first speak to the matter that the issue of isolation to a certain degree is challenging, as people are always knowing their rights. And the fact that we've got a case in Limpombo Premier that has been won against those who were forcefully taken to isolation. It has now been a situation where we have to take deeper steps in isolating our own people. Our strategy is still that strategy that says at a time that we find an, a positive person, that person must be in isolation. The isolation that we have currently is, has improved, of course, I think, Premier, because many people are now realizing that winter is coming with more infections. But before that, we had big challenges. I will just make an example, Premier, about Nelson Mandela, which had a stadium ready for quite some time. But that stadium, given the numbers of Port Elizabeth, has never been full. And it is not a matter that Port Elizabeth is not following up on contacts, nor a matter that Port Elizabeth is not testing. Statistics speaks for themselves. They are testing, but people would still choose to have their right to self-isolate, which sometimes become a bit difficult until they get sick. The second issue that actually speaks to us is the whole issue of stigmatization. Stigmatization has come into play in terms of people accepting that they are positive and that at the end of the day they need assistance for them to get COVID out of their bodies. Majority of people that we're finding and complaints are people starting to tell and blow whistles both in terms of factories, in terms of workplaces where people are positive but would not want to announce their status. And that on its own is a challenge. It is a challenge both for the recurrence of infections in our communities, in our families. And when we get to these areas, I will make an example today. As I came here, I was coming here, Premier, I got a case from one of the schools in Tanzania, and I asked the community member to call the MEC for help, I mean, for education. Precisely because there is a positive person in that school in Tanzania, and the community is worried about their own children, but the person would not want to accept that. And because people go using their own channels to get tested, sometimes it will only be when they are sick that they are known. So the issue of isolation is not a very easy issue. And this is why we're always appealing to our communities to deal with the issue of COVID, not in the way we dealt with the issue of HIV, and we only were able to be alert and know the facts later after so much damage. So that's the issue. About beds, we are proud. One time as Premier, I said it would be nice sometimes 
to take media through some of our facilities. Because in most cases, people get to our facilities, don't ask for information. They look around for something that they don't know. Let's make an example with Sisle Makiwane. Sisle Makiwane, everybody knows the old part of Sisle Makiwane casual was closed. And today, if you go back to that hospital, we have just, when in your presence, opened Ward 16 and found that there's not piping for oxygen, those beds now are fitted and they started moving whoever was on the other side of the new hospital to that ward. But subsequently got two other full clean wards that now are opened. Beds are coming in. We have agreed, Premier, that this thing of waiting for the specialized factories that make these beds is taking us a bit slow. And now we've come up with a mixed bag of beds that must be available. And that, to us, has opened specialization and ability of local people to actually come up with both wooden beds that actually are reclining. And we have not known that locally our own people can do that. We've just recently, last week Friday, re received a first batch of beds locally. So the spaces that you see, whether you go to Numbumelelo in Mushwa, you go to Eseskita in Kaiskamahuk, you go to Stutterheim, you will see, see that there's open spaces. You go to Bisho, you even go back to East London Free Hospital, you'll find that there are empty spaces that are just waiting for beds. However, we are the only people at this time who are still helping with many people that even go to private that don't get, bed, get beds and are referred to public facilities. On the issue of the daily upgrades, I'm sure that one is just a matter of people being busy. Even today, we started sending out statistics, and I'm sure the Premier would have been the center of sending it to you through his office. Definitely, it is not a matter of malice. It could be that, that people are busy. And I would urge that if people want statistics, it is no secret. People must actually call when there's a sleep in terms of that area. But seeing the growth in areas around and out of metros, I would want to put metros in, in terms of that growth. Precisely because for as long as our people are not able to observe regulations, it's getting a bit steep. Only yesterday, Premier, no, no, Sunday, only Sunday here in, in, in Devon, there is a particular person that passed on, but because of the level of the person in their church, they refuse, and it is forcing us to get into stringent matters. I was called when they went to visit. I went there, and I saw what was happening, and you feel you are just harassed when you talk to people nicely to tell them what to do. People are still continuing to deal with funerals of their loved ones in a normal way. There is this technicality where people would die before results are released. And when results are confirmed because of these actual delays in terms of the testing uh, laboratories, they would only come after a person has been buried. And we've always been pleading with our communities that during this time, no matter whether you think you know the reason why the person passed on, in this time, let us all take deaths as COVID deaths. For that, we are going to be more vigilant, and for that, we are going to do good such that we cannot regret after we find results that they are delaying. They are delaying. Because at the end of the day, we agree that people must immediately bury, but if the results have delayed, if people have kept to saying it could be COVID, so let's stick to, stick to it. Equally, that would actually make our own people be vigilant, also add, because what we are getting, Premier, is a bit overwhelming, where people will allow in their villages that people bury people, they look at them, they open them, they do things as normal. After that, it's a big cry to the Department of Health that the whole village here needs testing. It's quite overwhelming, and I would wish that our communities would accept our plea as the Department of Health and the, promise, and the province. Thank you, Premier.
Ja, 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 ja. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Squasha. Thank you very much, MECs, for the <coughs> detailed uh, responses you have given. The difference, uh, JJ, uh, of this new strategy we are talking about is that we are calling for a paradigm shift from a top-down approach to a bottom-up approach. Currently, our people are waiting for government to do everything for them while they are seated down, folding their arms, while they are not complying with regulations that are out there while they are risking themselves. They need police, they need soldiers to tell them that you will die, don't do this. They must now appreciate that this is here to destroy the humanity. It is killing. And the only way to defeat it is for every individual to really exercise restraint on the issue. That's what we are calling. So that bottom up approach, that uh, what command council approach, what councillor everyone involved, traditional leaders at that level, actually appreciates the role that must be played by our communities. Or, or else if we are not going to follow that now, we are actually all doomed. So we are basically mobilizing our people to stand up. People m must be concerned about people who are loitering in their villages, in their streets, people who cannot sit down, who cannot be in, at their homes. For us to really uh, be effective in really containing the spread of this virus, every household, every street, every VD, every uh, ward must take responsibility about movement of our people around, must take full responsibility about the regulations that are there in terms of how many people who must be in funerals. And now we are reaching a point where people will not be burying their loved ones. We are in that situation now. Where people will not be burying their loved ones, where we will no longer be talking about all what we are talking about, 50 uh, people to attend, where people will be buried by only their uh, children, by, by their siblings. We are, we are reaching that point already. We have received a complaint from the, uh, the Funeral Parlor Association that they are being overwhelmed uh, about the situation we are in. So clearly, we are now really uh, facing the eye of the storm. It's no longer an issue of the peak, etc. We are actually there in the middle of a crisis uh, as far as this issue of COVID-19 is concerned. We are still starting July. We are going far. You would understand the uh, disastrous effects of winter season. That's why we are saying let's adopt the risk adjusted, uh, the differentiated approach even in schools. We are not calling for fundamental deviation from what the national ministers has said. We are respecting that, we are part of that, but we know all the research, all the surveys that have been done nationally shows that Eastern Cape is the most vulnerable uh, province. We know the uh, health profile of our people, how risky the situation is. So that's why we really believe on the uh, preventative measures. That's why we've been calling for the primary health education. And this bottom up approach will help us to teach our people, will help us to intensify education, intensify uh, awareness uh, amongst our people. There are still other people out there who believe that there is no uh, COVID-19. There are elements that are just simply recalcitrant that we must deal with. And uh, there are those who are using their constitutional rights to say, I can't be uh, isolated, I can't be quarantined. All our sites have never been in full capacity. They have been running below 50% in terms of those. And that's why we are calling people to voluntarily come forward, isolate themselves. We do have spaces. We do have spaces in Nelson Mandela, in the, 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 the field hospital in Stadium, as well as the field hospital that we did there with Phosphor in South Africa. So we do have such everywhere. We do have isolation beds. We do have a, a quarantine sites. Even in our hospitals, we have got a new uh, extra beds that have just been concluded by Public Works. We are also working with the National Department of Public Works. We are in contact with them in terms of increasing more capacity around the availability of beds. The numbers are huge. We are now almost 40,000. Even if we would want to isolate and quarantine, it would not be possible. Government would not have that money to really isolate and quarantine everyone. But what we are saying, those who are self-isolating, or self-quarantining at home, they must take full responsibility. You can't be loitering, you can't be found elsewhere when your doctor has actually condemned you to be at home for a particular period. We want our people to take that full responsibility to understand that uh, if they don't, 
they are actually engaging on capable homicide and uh, unintentionally. So our plea is that let's work together. It's no longer about government now. Government can regulate, government can put up systems and measures, but it's about every individual South African. It's about us being patriotic. It's about us understanding that we have a country to protect. We have a future to protect. All what we're talking about is that, let's look at that. That's why it, it's not going to be easy uh, not to actually allow lower uh, alert levels to come in because we are trying to balance the campaign to save lives with the preservations of their livelihood. And government cannot sustain this issue of a social welfare state uh, perpetually. At some point, people must wake up. Those who are employed must go back to work. We must also protect the jobs that we have, little as they are in the Eastern Cape, so that those investments are not also uh, uh, actually uh, devastated by the COVID-19. So we're working with private sector to provide that sort of leadership. But now we are saying, Imeko esikuyo, sukala ulindel bukul meduza zongongoze, yo lendo si city, ku health, yonge i case in goge sinayo, yomdo swele gayo, no bebes e swele gay, ye hai hai, no ba iswegle, no ba into enga kanga wa testwa, maka testwe. Sizo kensegis ba aba ba shekenga semba abantu, ba safe, cause in naki kukusala na band kutu hai, uswele gay into etil, kuba ebe diagnose well on. So to kekula family ku sasa zeka lenjolo ngwana ngendlela yoba singaqona apha Eastern Cape sinabantu abaninzi abasolekele izindlini emakhaya because ingxake siyibonayo kwaba abantu bane comorbidities akukho nto ede ifunda ba umuntu makaya olalisho esibhedlela umuntu obheke esibhedlela ngumuntu ofuna i oxygen nofuna u ventilator njalo njalo so abanye bahleli abana Mego eba chuchumbe kisele bamba bapeke spedle. They can go to hospital, bapinde ba discharge. But ya ufiga le mego, iba ming, iya babulala. And we have seen that, and we have said, nezo mego zinjalo, people must be tested, even if it's post-humous. Because we need to ensure that we protect ababandu ba shekenga seva in the process. We are really uh, there in terms of uh, a serious daily uh, rate of infection. We are above 2,000. I think we are the second uh, uh, highest from Gauteng at, at, at 3,000 plus. We are the second now, uh, even above Western Cape, at 2,000 plus daily, if you look at the stats now. So it shows that this infection is really galloping. Uh, somewhere, somehow, everyone must begin to look around. We must look at all the blind spots to make it a point that we protect our societies. We protect ourselves. We are mobilizing now our people uh, on their own. And if we do that, there will be no issues of calling police, calling taxis and other things. People will remain at home. As soon as we do that, the virus is completely dislodged. Its transmission is fundamentally disrupted. There will be no virus movement if there are no movement of people. ukufa. Ukufa o kukona kuchaliwe kule nga kistongere nao ya lencholongwane. Lencholongwane ino bungozi, ia bulala, kwa ye aina matandabuzo ya ufiki. Si abakitayala kabandu bakutu kubasi chilo, ape Eastern Cape, abandu abaninza balapa bano mkwine ni babo. Bane ndo zabo, abakeli nazo. Asuzu iteta ke, ape Eastern Cape, lale nubwa uba anu nendwe til, kubasi kulo so mtu sesak. Yelo ndo si kela abandu, inga kumbi ka uzazi ndo kukba, uh, uneswegi, okanyi une high blood pressure, jalon jal, okanyi une sposentli zi, so vuma ukuz isolator enli. So vuma ukuz isolator uh, outside the hospital is as bad. So we do we have decanted uh, hospitals, we have created spaces, created beds for such isolation in hospital because when you need oxygen, when you need a ventilator, you must be able to get support immediately. In rural areas, we've got challenges where you wait for an ambulance for more than an hour because of the, the vastness of our areas. So that on its own, we are trying to limit that. We are trying to really mitigate such unnecessary uh, occurrences. So we are really appealing to our people, siaba bongos, abantu bagut, kauzas ba unemeko yonga pili kakate kakate, uze gutuwege ngogu unanencholong wane, ye coronavirus, liyo ukrinu espere, konuguze kaufuna uneto, Loko kwa unigwe amandla, no moya ofuneka ya mzimbenu wako, ukaweleze uifu manalono. So senza, eso stelo kwa nba kutu, siti kengo kuna lomkosis uenzai. 
kubantu bakuthi ngumkhoso basisebenze sonke phaya ekuhlaleni zikhona inkosi ebese leziqaleni ukwenza lo msebenzi bebambisene no what councillors city zonke ke ngoke what is it kuba apha eastern cape akusekho what ngoku unoze uthi ayi yo hotspots singabe siyathetha nge Nelson Mandela siyathetha nge Buffalo city kuba zina manana makhulu phansi zonke i what is it phansi zonke i district zethu they are almost above 1000 infections uh, in terms of the, the, the latest uh, uh, real time data. So, if you can say this again, but in any case, you can see that seeing and seeing who take an angle, see Zame Ugo Babela, Lomli Loweto, Konukuze Unga and the Kafa Zelabong, Abanya Banda Beselenova by a Kuseleki, say I fell along to a cool Abanda Badala, Mabanya Mesel, say I can't remember go back as Lalin Zalape Eastern Cape. I do not possess the azimwing, the nom clean, Uba Yokom Kelimaliako, Yen Kamka, Mogane, Yer Bamam, Fnego, and Bobeget to Lopinus of Manuku, Jubangaba, who figure Usas and Apa Ereti, Ekwan, the Selega, who take what I call Peggy Vinglin, who figure Kuko, Inan or Pitizel, Agaband, Kungako, and Alomi Teto, a observer. Sabatelos or Mashishi, Baseben San and Atuglando, Lukand Valu to Song and Goku Kusela Bomba Bandu Bagut, Baguego from Amapolis, Gogoba, where now Kuselege Ebomin Bak. Ubanga ba uza funi police ali zonganda wen bunga bopi usenga ge asusuba na o ama police asaba i six point seven million apo umtu nomda asaba ne police ali zamkada e Eastern Cape ama police asaba sne da sne ngagi zabanda ba shukume zamalunge lo mama gwelitala sne ngagi zabanda ba ba yo ama sela ne zini zindo sne ngagi zabanda ba shukume zanjabanda gokta ama police akageni ne zondo gwelitala no kole na yoluwa ne cholungwa ne i funi ma police i funi tina singa band. Usuka pile talent to Kokosh Abandu and Abed to Kokosh is in Ruzet, Wonke Umdu Ayas, Bakufi, Gele, Kaya Logogba, Sikule Lokando. Zamogutig, JJ, Umatugo, Indogba, the Silogo Sitatanga Santa, Kutu Ite, in National Command Council, Magwens Velon, Kukabanda Bakelion, Jeba, you are lending at Sitata, Kubandabanga Vai. So we want to talk to our people. We must stop talking at our people. We want to talk to them. The World Command Council will create that platform where we interact directly with our people. So that's our strategy now. We want to go all out, all World Councillors, all hands must be on the deck, mayors, from the World Command Council to the local Command Council to the District Local Com uh, Command Council up to the province. So we are creating that kind of a uh, system that must work to ensure that we are able to detect every deficiency in the system and attend to it with the proper response that it requires. Thank you. With that, that's the end of our press conference. Thank you very much. For one-on-ones, we'll entertain them now that the press conference is over. Thank you very much for coming. We come out of that briefing, Oscar Mabuyani, the Premier of the Eastern Cape, calling out to communities to work with government in a bottom-up approach in terms of the community response, encouraging the public to also take charge of their own local responses, introducing a seven-step community-based COVID-19 response plan combined with the deployment of the SANDF, what councillors to take a more active role in community responses, and the seven-point plan includes uh, sending military to some parts of the province, saying uh, the affected areas will be announced in time, strict control of entry into some communities, especially where infections are rising, uh, hospital plan, data management and feedback plan. Uh, the Premier also applauding whistleblowers. This was an important one. Applauding whistleblowers who are uncovering and reporting on corruption related to the procurement and rolling out of government's COVID-19 relief programs in the province. 22 thousand infections so far in the province. Uh, the Premier saying that with 56% uh, 56 recovery rate, it's clear that being infected doesn't have to result in a death. However, urging members of the society to persist and be vigilant, stay at home, avoid going to funerals. He says the past 100 days of fighting the virus have brought about some new insights into the fight and these are helping as they review the strategy. And the number of hotspots continuing to increase since the relaxation of the lockdown. Also, the MEC for Health there, Cindy Swagomba, uh, coming in saying that the province, uh, starting off uh, with concerns that isolation is becoming a human rights issue with some people resisting isolation. She also touched on logistical issues, including uh, that the province is getting more and more beds. Uh, that story there coming out from the Eastern Cape. You're watching the agenda. Let's take a break. <laughs>